the more people we can get to help, the better chances of breaking our home. Three-year-old Aaliyah Lunsford went missing. Around 9, 9.30, I went back in to wake her up. She was gone. Where is three-year-old Aaliyah Lunsford? Family members say Aaliyah is a shy child. She never leaves the house unless an adult is with her. Combing ground and water areas near Aaliyah's home. Only a faint trail picked up by search dogs. Family members wait out the search. Police say the trail for the West Virginia toddler has run dry. We're still unsure if the river holds the answers to Aaliyah's disappearance. We've entered her and is missing. Pray for answers. Trying to find Aaliyah Lunsford. We love her. We miss her. Look at this gorgeous child missing tonight. There is a race against time, and we're trying to understand exactly what were the circumstances surrounding her disappearance. It was 6.30 in the morning this past Saturday. Her mother says she checked on the child. The child was in her bedroom, and then uh, she saw her stepfather off to work and then came back at 9 a.m., and the child had vanished. So I want somebody, Joe Gomez, reporter, lay it out for us. Set the stage. Was this child in a room by herself? Uh, did she have siblings with her? And uh, if the child, if, if the mother didn't actually drive the, the dad to work, if she just sort of saw off the stepfather, then she's in the house, presumably. That's a lot harder for a child to be abducted when the mother is in the vicinity when she hasn't actually left the premises. That's absolutely right. You know, the three hours there from 6 to about 9.30, those three hours unaccounted for when somebody could have, you know, come into the house, snatched little Aaliyah, she might have wandered off. She was in her bed. She was sick. She had on her princess shirt, her pink princess shirt and Dora the Explorer pajama bottoms. But what she about sick other siblings? Jane. Was she alone? She was sick. Okay, let's hear about that. She was sick. She was She was in bed. She was sick. You know, is she going to wander off by herself, or is somebody else going to come in there and take her away? What we understand about little Aaliyah is that she's a shy girl. She doesn't talk to strangers, according to police. Police believe that she would have only left the house if somebody, you know, if, if maybe if an adult was, was, was there, tried to lead her out of the house or something like that, Jane. It's very bizarre. Why would this happen? Why would this little three-year-old angel just go missing? I want to go to Woodrow Tripp. A former police commander and a polygraph expert. It is my understanding that polygraphs are being given to certain people, but that the mother is not being given a polygraph because she's eight months pregnant. What's the connection there? Why does pregnancy preclude a polygraph? Well, Jane, American Polygraph Association has certain standards, and as a result of that, we don't polygraph pregnant females for a lot or a host of reasons. Uh, keep in mind, we're recording physiological... Give me a couple. Give me a couple. Sure. Give me a couple. We're recording physiological activity of a person's body. Well, I'm recording heartbeats. Well, in this case, I have two that are going on. You know, we measure perspiration. We measure all of that physiological activity that's going on. And when you have a pregnant person such as she is, you've got a lot of issues. And in fact, could we cause a miscarriage? All of that is put at risk, so we very rarely, if ever, it's got to be extraordinary circumstances. Would this be an extraordinary? Yes, it would be. But at this point, I think there's a lot more homework that needs to be done before they ever get to a polygraph. Jenny, Colorado, your question or thought, Jenny? Um, I was just wondering, I got confused about where the dogs traced her scent from where to where. And I'm just looking at the picture. She looks so sad all the time. I just wonder if there's any history of social services you know, going to the home or anything like well, that. Well, very good questions. Ruben Perdue, what's the history here? Well, on the dog scent, first of all, the dog, from what I talked to the sheriff this afternoon, traced a direct scent from the home to the river, which was about, uh, you know, about 40 yards away, as you said, but you have to go around some brush. And I asked him, can the dogs give you an indication of exactly where she went? Do they follow a direct trail? He said, yes, they absolutely do. And he said, this dog followed as direct a trail as you could possibly get from the home to the river uh, less than 100 yards away. As for the history of the family, the mother does have a criminal record, and in fact, according to the dates uh, from when she was incarcerated, she had some crimes out of neighboring Braxton and Gilmer counties where, in fact, she moved to, to this neighborhood from. Uh, it looks, according to our numbers, that you know, this child may have been born while the mother was incarcerated. Uh, and keep in mind, they are brand well, new. Well, let me say this. This child is an angel, and I don't care where she was born. We've got to find her. 
It's no fault of her own. It's week two of season 13. A three-year-old girl is missing from her West Virginia home. Police say they've dealt with missing persons cases in the past, but Aaliyah's is unlike any other. Police say it's like three-year-old Aaliyah Lunsford just disappeared. Around 9, 9.30, I went back in to wake her up. She was gone. Aaliyah Lunsford went missing from her Bendale home, and ever since, search teams have turned this typically quiet neighborhood upside down in the hopes of bringing her home. Uh, she's an adorable three-year-old child, last seen in her Dora the Explorer outfit, and we want to find out where this this angel is tonight because she's missing and there's a race against time. We've passed the 48 hour mark, but let me say this. It was mentioned that her mother has a criminal record, but it's not related to the kids at all. It was for forgery. So there is absolutely no history in this family of child abuse that we can find whatsoever. So we could very well be talking about a very devastated mother who is absolutely desperate, looking for her child who has done nothing wrong. I want to go to Ellie Jostad and want to ask you about how the canines tracked her scent to the river. What do you know about mm -hmm. that? Right. Well, it's my understanding that they brought in a canine unit almost as soon as they could. As soon as she was reported missing, this would have been early yesterday afternoon. The dogs were able to pick up her scent, which is a good thing, obviously. They traced it straight to that river, which, uh, as we said before, is about 40 yards from our house, less than a 100-yard walk around some brush. So that is where they were immediately focusing the search. Although it was dark by the time divers got in the water Saturday night, they continued that search in the dark until 11 p.m. Saturday. They were back out there yesterday and again today. Still no sign of her. Dr. Kathleen London, we're hearing now about this girl is a shy girl. She was sick. She was under the weather. So what's the likelihood that she's going to wake up and uh, sneak out of the house, open a door, and then uh, head all the way to this river when she's under the weather? Oh, not just that, but through brush. I mean, three-year-olds tend to stick with familiar situations. So if it was a very familiar trek from the house down to the river, that I could see her doing by herself. But this is, no, I don't see this. this a a three-year-old who wakes up, especially if she's not feeling well, is going to be looking for mommy or one of her siblings or playing in her bed by herself. Doesn't now, sense. there are 25 sex offenders in the area. When we come back, we're going to talk about what cops are doing to question those sex offenders. And we're going to uh, unleash the lawyers to analyze that aspect. Uh, meantime, it is week two of... Three-year-old Aaliyah Lunsford... Missing. She was gone. Missing. Missing from her West Virginia home. We want her home... The toddler's mother says Aaliyah would never leave home alone. Search teams have turned this typically quiet neighborhood upside down in the hopes of bringing her home. Canines, divers in the water. Canine teams reportedly tracked Aaliyah's scent to a river near her home. Family members say Aaliyah is a shy child. Last seen wearing purple Dora the Explorer pajamas and a pink princess sweatshirt, her hair tied in a ponytail. Authorities asking for your help tonight. Where is three-year-old Aaliyah Lunsford? No clues. She's just disappeared. Welcome back. I'm Jane Velez Mitchell filling in for Nancy Grace tonight. Where is this precious three-year-old? She was last seen Saturday morning at 6.30 in the morning by her mom. And then the mom comes back to check on the child at about 9 a.m. on Saturday. And the child has vanished into thin air so we are in a race against time we have passed the 48 hour mark but everybody is just all hands on deck trying to find this child straight out to reporter joe gomez joe lay it out for us what were the circumstances surrounding her disappearance this little angel jane was asleep in her bed three years old apparently sick with some kind of cold that she caught from the night before uh, mommy came in the check in her around 6 o'clock in the morning. Then she left. Then she came back around uh, 9 o'clock, and the, the little baby was gone. Then she got into her car. Mommy drove her around searching, searching for her little princess, but she, she couldn't find her. And then she ran out of gas. She was so frantic trying to find her little girl. She said she ran out of gas, had to borrow gas from somebody, finally came back home at 1130. At 1130 was when 
She reported her little girl missing. This was on Saturday morning, Jane. And now, that was Saturday. Today's Monday. She's still out there. She's, she's somewhere. And Ellie Jostad, I understand you're Nancy Grace producer that you've determined that there is surveillance video of this mother doing precisely that search. Uh, tell me about that and also about the stepfather who goes off to work. Where does he work that he's going off so early Saturday morning? Right. Well, first about the surveillance cameras. Um, what the Sheriff's Department tells us is that they were able to find some surveillance video from nearby businesses along the route where the mother said she searched, and they do, in fact, see her doing just that. Unfortunately, there's no sign of Aaliyah on any of those videos. Uh, police also tell us that they were able to confirm that the stepfather was picked up went to work, was at work. He works at the Stonewall Jackson Resort, which isn't too far from there. It's a you know, facility that has hotel rooms, a golf course, restaurants, etc. All right. As Nancy would say, let's unleash the lawyers on borrowing her phrase tonight, Alan Ripka and Brad Cohen. Uh, let me ask you about the fact that there are reportedly 25 sex offenders within approximately a five-mile radius of where this child went missing. So, Alan, how do authorities approach those sex offenders to see if they have anything to do with this situation? I think they go knocking on doors as quickly as possible and they try to talk to each and every one of them. When you look at where that house is so close to this waterway and we saw a boat in there with the divers, someone could be back there with a boat. They could know that so many little children live in this house, have gone by there many times and really abducted someone and that may be why the scent ends at the river. So you got to speak to each and every one of them and, and, and look hard and try to get inside those houses. All right, Brad Cohen, no Amber Alert has been issued. Now, some would say that's because we do not have a suspect description and we do not have a vehicle. But Correct. is it possible that authorities don't consider this a stranger abduction? Uh, no, I, don't, I think the reason why they don't have an Amber Alert is just, the, is just that. They don't, she doesn't meet the qualifications of an Amber Alert. I think that they, they are definitely going to focus on the people that are closest to her, the people that are in the family. I mean, I have three nephews. I'm very surprised when you have four siblings that, someone would let, that any of them would let her sleep till 9.30 because they're jumping on each other's bed and waking each other up at 7 o'clock in the morning. The story is, is, is a little suspicious. Again, I don't like to prejudge, especially this mother who seems to be, you know, everything else seems to fall in place that she actually was looking for this child. But the story really does not make any sense in terms of all these people being in the house, someone sneaking in the house, abducting this young lady. I'm wondering if the police ever used those dogs to find out if there was anyone from the family that also was down by that river, or they only sniffed for her specific scent. Oh, that's an interesting question. Uh, Ruben Perdue, do you know if, if they tracked any other family member sent? I do not know if they tracked any other family member sent. What I do know is that according to the sheriff, to the best of his knowledge, the child had never been to the river before, had never seen that shore uh, or that riverbank. Remember, they've only been in this house for a couple of months. This child did not wander off. Uh, and to the best of their knowledge, the child had never been to the riverbank before. So if the dogs picked up a scent and followed it to the bank, and if that is true, then it would have had to have been a, a recent scent, a very near and new scent within 24 to 48 hours. Well, okay, so that makes it doubly unlikely that the child uh, would go to an area she's never seen before and go through brush to get to a river when she's a ch shy child. It's very early in the morning, and she's also under the weather. Pam! California, your question or thought, Pam? Yes, my question is that uh, how come the mother didn't ask the children uh, if they had seen her in the house and then, you know, had them look for her while she called the law? Well, we don't necessarily know that uh, the mother uh, did not consult the children to find out whether or not they had seen uh their little sibling. I don't know that she did not do that. All we know is that she was driving around hysterically looking for her child. But, I mean, Mark Class, just uh, common mathematics would tell you that uh, if you're dealing with a three-year-old child, uh, there's only a certain distance that that child can walk. So is it really helpful to drive around frantically unless you think the child's been abducted? 